Um, now we are appreciated to welcome Lars Barr from Saldi AG GmbH Germany for, by the speech title of Maximizing Phototrophic World Activity Using Saldi AG Cultivators. The stage is yours. So, does it work? You can also check, you can also check your time for your next speech. Okay. So, hello everyone. Uh, at first, I want to thank the organizers for having me here on stage and uh, giving me the opportunity to exhibit some products uh, near its uh, posters. My name is Lars Baer, I'm a biologist, uh, co-founder, co-inventor, and one of the managing directors of CELDEC. And uh, I wanted to talk about how our history was in 2011. Um, my colleagues and me have been uh, researching how to find uh, the most productive microalgae cyanobacteria for biotechnological applications. And um, in 2013, we discovered a combination of features that allowed for the first time highest productivities to high final cell densities, also with parallel cultures. And these promising results led to the founding of CELDEC in 2016. And um, in my talk, I want to address uh, how to um, explore the potential of microalgae growing photoautotrophically with parallel cultures and why the CELDEC devices are uh, pretty suitable for this purpose. Yes, like R Ralph already told, and also Olaf uh, told us, uh, Mumax is not uh, five gram cell dry mass per liter in day, and it was even faster in the in the HD100 cultivators. It could be possibly due to the um, higher mixing rate in the HD10, which was uh, maybe above the optimal uh, mixing rate for this strain. And what I want to show here is that uh, in all variants during the linear phase, uh, we reach still high um, quantum yields. It is um, nearly 25% uh, of the maximum theoretical um, quantum yield you can achieve, still at these high densities and also with this high uh, light intensity. So, um, considering uh, the unavoidable problem of self-shading, we assume the following characteristics um, of its strain to be favorable for growth performance at high cell density. First, it's the ability to grow at very low efficient uh, mean light intensities, because in uh, dense media, um, the, light, the mean light intensity falls far below the optimum uh, light intensity for, for the reproduction of the cell. Second, it's the resistance to. Oh my God! Second is the resistance to photo inhibition during periods with high PFD, and that's why um, every cell is coming to the surface sometimes, and they during this phase they they catch a lot of light, and um, photo inhibition should not occur there. And of course, tolerance to high rates of uh, turbulent mixing. So in the next uh, slide, I have prepared a small video clip to let you know how this looks in reality and how this works in reality. And now you can see the short movie. You can see the HD10 cultivators sh shaking quite intensively. And here you see also the, the thick, dark color of these, uh, of these high density cultures, also in the 100 ml scale. 
And Olaf already showed the, the bigger unit. Uh, I think we see it next. There you can see the shaking of this bigger unit. And here everything is visualized. Um, so how, how light increases, how the CO2 concentration behaved during your um, experiment. So I think this is enough. So I want to come to uh, some applications of our clients. Here in 2017, a group uh, of, in Potsdam in Germany, they cultivated, uh, for example, a terrestrial cyanide bacterium, and it was Nostoc punctiforme. They compared uh, the cultivation methods, uh, the conventional cultivation to the HD cultivation, and what they found was that they harvested uh, around 400 gram um, wet weight after 24 days, and with the conventional method, they were around uh, 14 gram wet weight. So we, they, they achieved a higher biomass, 26 times higher biomass uh, with these cultivators. The same group uh, published also a paper in 2019 where they were comparing the natural compounds in, in this uh, Nostoc um, punctiforme. And here you can see the difference uh, in the amount of natural compounds uh, between these two uh, cultivation methods. So the uh, blue line shows the amounts of uh, natural products in the high density culture. And it is obvious that that the uh, upregulation of uh, more than 50% of biosynthetic gene clusters are present. I mean, this, I, I mean it speaks for itself. <laughs> and this is um, a paper in 2020 from one of our clients in Sweden. They compared the uh, um, parallel bubble columns with one of our starter kits. So here you can see the increase in biomass they reached in, in like four days, OD40, something like this. And here they reached around an OD of three. And they produced um, terpenoids um, with these um, cultures. And um, what they found was a uh, hundred times higher uh, bisaboline titer in the in the high density cultures and compared to the reference system and also Pachulol, they, they, they also tested it for Pachulol and uh, another substance and that was also greatly enhanced uh, compared to the reference system. And here is uh, Olaf's uh, paper from 2021 where they compared um, the high density cultivation also with other methods here and uh, for the production of polyamine. And what they found here is that they got a medium to, to grow them up to 20 gram uh, cell dry mass. Here in this case, they went only up to 10. But if you, if you see the productivity of uh, cadaverin um, in the cell egg systems, they, it went up to 100 milligram per liter in day and was uh, the highest uh, productivity they saw also in all of these systems. This is only half the system they tested. There's also another graphic which I don't show here. <clears throat> so um, let me summarize um, why the CEDEC culture technique is very suitable for comparing high density, high productive growth uh, for, for different microorganisms. So we reach productivities of um, around 10 gram cell dry mass per liter in day. We are reaching a finer cell densities um, over 25 gram cell dry mass per liter. We can cultivate exenically, and we have nearly no loss of CO2. And the system is uh, very suitable for rapid and reproducible high density cultivation with many replicates under homogeneous conditions. And now I want to say thank you. And um, yeah, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Seems to be always the first close to the microphone. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> Still, uh, there's nothing to emphasize on because we loved your systems. It's great. Um, I was just thinking, how large can you get? I mean, we are now talking about yeah, one and a half and two liters. There's always a 
the, you know, the biotechnologists love to have something in the, maybe in the five or ten meters range. I don't know. This question, question is absolutely right. And um, of course, uh, our biggest system currently with the two liter scale, it's the maximum size we want to uh, realize on a shaker. That, uh, that doesn't make sense for, for higher, bigger volumes. We have to find another way to, to bring in the turbulence. And we have concepts for this already, and we are testing it, and um, we will publish some things when the time is right, when the patent uh, file is uh, finished, and uh, yeah, we come out with these informations. But there are concepts already, and that's, it could be used also on a bigger scale, not in, in 1,000 liter scale, that is absolutely um, stupid, but um, we can replace bigger um, reactors with these small ones. Uh, we have shown it many times now, and I think um, our clients give us the same <laughs> opinion. And uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a question uh, yes. similar. Uh, is it uh, simulate uh, the in industrial production? Uh, because generally, lab equipment uh, can be well controlled and uh, in that, uh, is it uh, sim similar like, like a pilot equipment uh, not about uh, uh, volume mm -hmm. uh, about system mm -hmm. uh, system can be combined to industrial equipments uh, if I st understood you correctly it can simulate, uh, we, are, we believe that high density culture is the future um, to reach high productivity. This is, uh, I think Ralph made it clear, uh, Olaf made it clear. So if we want to have more productive cultures also on a bigger scale, we have to move to higher cell densities. And uh, in these um, devices, you can simply um, change the volume and you, you change the, the layer size and then you can connect to your process you want to have. So um, you can compare the, the different cultures yeah, with, these, um, with these different um, ways to, to modify the system. And simply uh, the CO2 can be modified, uh, the light intensity can be modified by changing volume, you, you act the layer thickness. Um, you can precisely set the turbulence in the system by the shaking speed, so you have all the tools you need to simulate your process also on a bigger scale. Yeah. Um, you show, okay, this is not working. Okay, so you showed some uh, biosynthetic gene clusters that were overexpressed. Um, mm -hmm. So at those densities, do they express any unwanted uh, um, secondary metabolites or toxic compounds that are not desired in cultures? As a, this group is especially interested in, in new natural compounds and uh, what they saw in these high density cultures that it's, it's a complete difference from the, um, uh, these, these conditions, high, high light intensities, a lot of CO2, seem to modify the, na the natural compounds uh, which can be detected inside, yes. Do, do we know, are they, can they be toxic or like it, they might be secreting uh, They are new, if they are toxic, I, I cannot say because I'm no natural compound uh, scientist. Um, they are simply more in this biomass. And uh, you can see uh, the papers yourself and, and okay. make a picture for yourself because I can't relate to that. Sorry. All right, thank you. So, thanks a lot. Thank you for your value.